Okay, but, well, we're going to end on a sad note, which I normally don't do, but it's really hard when Utah basketball is what we're talking about because they just haven't been good this year. And, you know, there's there's a lot to go to be said. Um, they're still a pretty young team. You know, their, their leader, Timmy Allen, is just a junior. And so there's there's a whole a lot of things. It's a young team. It's such it's a very young team. Young. It's very young. It's mostly sophomores and freshmen still. Um, but there's so much to talk about from last night. So to begin, there is one thing that Utah men's basketball is consistent with, and it's being inconsistent. After a 40, after a 46 point game against USC last week, they scored 43 in the first half against number 17 Oregon. I don't understand how that happens. Okay. But then they only scored 30 in the second half. So there's just this vast amount of inconsistency. And that's the thing they're most consistent about is you never know what Utah team is going to show up. You don't know what players are going to show up. You don't know if Timmy Allen's going to play like he did in the first half last night, or if he's going to play like he did in the second half last night. He had 17 in the first half. I think he only had six in the second half. Never know. Moving on. Every single game is something different. You know, last night, the biggest issue was turnovers as Utah committed 18 turnovers against Oregon. I I believe going into last night's game, Utah actually had the best um, turnover rate in the Pac-12. So they were committing the least amount of turnovers. But last night, 18 against Oregon, which means 26.5% of their possessions ended in a turnover. Over a fourth of their possessions, they gave the ball back to the Ducks. And off of those, they allowed 25 points. So it's just, it's really difficult because against USC, it was an inability to hit open shots. Earlier in the season, it was an inability to rebound against BYU. And then last night, it's turnovers. So it's just, it's really hard to win games when you don't know what what's the problem going to be tonight? You know, obviously, and Sam, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you get in here. But obviously, you know, college basketball, sports in general, you're probably going to have a different outlier every single game. But hopefully, you know what to expect that outlier to be. With Utah, it's a question mark every night. Yeah. So the only thing is, like, I was watching the game via Twitter because this was happening at the same time as the gymnastics meet. Is just. I know I I'll, I'll 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 toss this question out to you and I'll let you get to it. But like I know Larry changed up the lineup last night. So and he went kind of on the smaller side and it, in the first little bit it looked like it was working because mm. you had that huge lead over Oregon. But then things started to deteriorate and it just didn't work as well. So do you think that Larry? Because prior this week Larry said like, oh yeah, we're gonna play the guys who play the best in or practice the best and look, look good in practice. Or he said something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Do you think that he actually put the best five players out there last night? Um, Yeah, I do. Um, I actually like that. He switched things up. Um, I think, you know, Alfonso Plummer and Brennan Carlson, they're two good players, but I think especially in basketball, you need to put, it's not like football where you have the best 11 on the, on, on the field on, on offense and defense In basketball roles are, are significant. For instance, you know, you look at, look at the Utah jazz um, right now, Jordan Clarkson, who's the sixth man for the jazz, he's coming off the bench and he's playing a very important role as the sixth man providing bench scoring. It's, mm-hmm. But however, he's averaging more points a game than Boyan Bogdanovich, who starts. But it's it's more important that Clarkson come off the bench for the Jazz and score those points for the bench instead of being in the starting lineup. Because if you were to switch those, we might not get as much bench production and we fall behind when our bench is on the floor, opposed to having Clarkson run run that menta- that that unit. So it's it's with basketball, it's really important that you have the right guy in the right role. And I think moving Alfonso to the bench was wise because then you don't fall apart scoring wise when the bench mm-hmm. comes on. And, and as well, I think it was smart to, to put Carlson on the bench. You know, 
I just I think that he is um he has a lot of potential I he's like yeah. he's a really he has the potential to be one of a really good basketball player for Utah but he just lacks the weight and the size he yeah. is he gets body bagged against yeah, a lot of these guys because he's a he's, seven footer but he's a twig and I think I I think I know you and I have talked about this like before, but I think he is one of the people that really would have benefited from a true natural off season because he would have had time to hit the gym and bulk up and do all these things. But with COVID and stuff, it really messed up his schedule and his production. Right. And I think if he can bulk up, he will be a really good uh, player for this for this Utah team. But until he gets until he bulks up, it's 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 wise to not have him. A starter, in my opinion. Right. Well, and I, I, I agree with that. I just, I just think he's too small. Um, I mean, this is a guy that's not even like toned. You know, I mean, th- there's guys that play basketball that you know their their body type is they're they're really thin. They're you know they're tall and thin, but they can be toned. He's not even toned. This kid is just just bone. That that's really it. Skin and bone. And so it, he just he gets pushed around, um, and that that's just not what you need. So I, I do like that he switched it up. Larson was great um, coming into the starting lineup. He played extremely well. Finished with 15 points, five assists, five rebounds, um, and he actually was the only Utah player to finish with a positive plus minus plus three. And I think he was three for three from three point range. So he he was great. I personally I think you know. You, you may want to look at benching Ryland Jones, um, but I'll get into that in a second. Um, so, yeah, it's just I, – I will say I do like the change. I don't know if it's going to remain that way. I don't know if he just went small because Oregon went small. Um, but Oregon figured it out in the second half. They actually kind of took their foot off the gas as far as chucking tons and tons of three-pointers. They actually – they only scored eight points in the paint in the first half opposed to 20 in the second half. Um, and they shot uh, much better from the floor. So basketball is tough. Um, it's, it's getting the right starting lineup. It's getting the right role players. It's getting, it's making adjustments at halftime and, and constantly throughout the game. And I think a little bit last night, coach K may not have made the right adjustments at halftime and into the second half. So, um, let me just finish here with, with what I want to talk about with Ryland Jones. Um, I think Coach K should experiment with taking Ryland Jones out of the starting lineup. He looks lost on the floor at times. He's not playing aggressive. I feel like he kind of just roams the floor and he lets Timmy Allen do his thing, Alfonso Plummer do his thing, uh, everybody else. It's almost I feel like when he's out on the floor, it's almost like Utah's playing with four guys. And he's only averaging 6.8 points per game this season. It's unacceptable as a starting point guard. Um, so Did just he not to, score his first points until like the last like, three minutes of the game? Yep, yep. Okay. he was zero for three, and then he had two baskets, I believe, in the last few minutes. Um, so that's not good. But Utah now four and four, one and three in the conference. They face an eight and three Colorado, eight and three Stanford, six and seven Cal. Uh, if Utah can go two and one, that's fantastic. But realistically, I see it's one, one and two. two, and and I think even Cal's going to be a battle. It could be an zero and three week. It could because you've Stanford has um, Zaire on their team, and he's they're four and one in the conference. Yeah, he's 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 insane. And then and Cal, Colorado always Colorado always gets the best of us. It's just kind of depressing. Cal, I thought Cal was going to be like an easy team to beat this year. Um, right. No, they're one and five in the conference, but Utah's one and three. They just played more games, so that. That's that's Utah's Exper- best it's, shot at yeah. victory, and I'm not even going to say they're going to win that one. Yeah, it's going to be a rough week for Utah basketball. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. It also might be a little bit of a rough week for Utah women's basketball because they take on um, Cal and Stanford as well, and Cal is or Stanford's the number one team in the nation. So uh, that's the one thing Utah athletics really needs to work on. I think is. You know, you have an elite football program, you know, elite gymnastics, elite skiing, a couple, you know, quite a few elite programs, but your basketball just continues to bleed. Lynn Roberts is a really good coach. Yeah. I will give her that. I will give her that, but I, I, we don't have enough time to del- delve into Larry Kristoviak. We could do a whole episode on just Larry Kristoviak, but 
with that, we have to bid adieu this week. Um, thank you again for watching Ute Dash. As always, um, we are writing columns now through Sports Pack 12. You can find them on their website at Sports Pack 12. Also on our website, dash sports.tv. While you're on your phone and on social media, be sure to follow Sports Pack 12 at Sports Pack 12 on Twitter and then follow us at Dash Sports TV on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, Cole and I will, we, next Sunday, we'll see. Utah has Utah versus Oklahoma gymnastics. Um, rough week coming up for men's basketball. But next time we see you guys, we'll talk some more youth. So, Cole, what do we do? As always, we give them a... Go youth, guys. Go youth, guys. <laughs>